peace to you from God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Throughout our liturgy so far, and even in our readings, there's been a lot of references to light. I have one more. I'd like to read one more reference to light. This is from 2 Corinthians 4, 6. For God, who said, let the light shine out of darkness, may his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. If you talk about light, you have to talk about darkness. May the light shine out of darkness. Does it, does it seem a little bit odd to be talking about the darkness in a morning service? Because it's pretty light here. Does it seem a little bit odd to talk about darkness on Christmas Day? Shouldn't we be talking and focusing exclusively on light? Light with a capital L, and we are. But maybe, maybe that verse that I just read here, that the light shine out of darkness, maybe these other verses in the Southern Liturgy that have talked about light shining in dark places, maybe, maybe that would have been better reserved for the last night service at 10 o'clock when we start. Maybe that would have been better for that. But talking about darkness now, because it's bright in here, it's bright outside. Does it really make an impact? We can talk about darkness in general terms, but if we're not actually in the dark, is it still being as effective? I'm going to venture to say yes, because the darkness, and I'm not telling you anything y'all don't know, the darkness that's being alluded to all throughout the liturgy this morning and as it's referred to light, the darkness that's being alluded to is not a physical darkness, but a spiritual darkness. In times of darkness is the times when God promised the coming Messiah. He promised it to Adam and Eve and after the darkness of sin came into their lives and the world. The promise came to David during the darkness of his monarchy in times of unrest and revolt. The promise came to the children of Israel in the darkness of the times when they were exiled. They were completely removed from their homeland, carted off thousands of miles, and they wondered if they were still God's children. And they wondered if that original promise to Adam and Eve was ever going to be fulfilled. It came to the people in the Judean countryside in the form of a desert preacher who preached a baptism for repentance of the darkness of sins. And when the promise was fulfilled, the light walked among the people, and that was our gospel reading. The light walked among the people who lived in a time of spiritual darkness controlled by self-appointed keepers of their, of their truth. And when this light appeared, Two things happened. One, the people who were so hungry for a word from God saw the very glory of God on the face of Jesus. And two, by his coming, he brought the light of the love, the light of God's love to the hearts of those who had been in darkness for so long. And it is so easy to see why people were so attracted to Jesus, why people just thronged around him. When you shine a light on something, everything that was once in darkness is exposed. It, 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 everything is made clear. Hidden things are exposed and the truth is made known and we can finally know the truth. We can finally understand. It's no wonder people flock to him. And yet it is these same reasons, the exact same reasons, that many were repelled by him. Because when he showed, shown the light of God, what they held as true, what they held as right, what they held as their, their comfort zones, was all taken away. <coughs> what they based their lives on turned to be turned out to be nothing but a shifting foundation. They were blind to their darkness. And the light of God exposed them. And it's so easy for us today, isn't it? It is so easy for us today to look back at the people before the time of Jesus and during the time of Jesus and shake our heads at them, laugh at them, because we would have gotten. We would have not only understood what Jesus was all about, but we would have welcomed him with open arms, right? We would have done things so 
different than what they did. In fact, if only, if only there was darkness in the world now, like there was at that time, then the light of God could shine in it, and we could let that light shine in it. We could I help everyone understand how great, wonderful, and good God is. We could be the light bearers to the world. If only it was dark now. You know where I'm going with this, right? It is dark now. The truth is that there is as much, if not more, spiritual darkness in our world today as there was in the time of Jesus. People still sit in darkness. People that we all know. People that we all love. Family, friends, co-workers, schoolmates, neighbors. They still sit in darkness. They don't know who Jesus is. Not knowing about the love of God who, who, for them. That love of God that moved him to do whatever was necessary so they could be in heaven with him. The light of God still shines for these people, and the bearers of that light, that's you and me. That's believers in Jesus. That's all fine and good. No, no problem there, right? No one's going to jump up and say, boy, you've really gone off the deep end there, right? Well, let me ask you this. I want to ask you a very personal question this morning. This Christmas morning, as we talked about the light. We talked about the light of God shining. Let me ask you something. Do you really want God's light to shine? Do you really want God's light to shine on you? Because if it shines on you, your sins are going to be exposed. You know those sins that I'm talking about. My sins will be exposed if it shines hard on me. You know what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about all oh, those average everyday sins that we all do. I'm talking about those deep, dark things that if the people around us this morning knew about, we would just die of embarrassment or guilt or shame because of them. That's not the kind of exposure we want. And we want the light of God. Sure, shine that light, God. Shine it on my enemy. He or she deserves it. They deserve to be exposed for the kind of person they are. Shine that light on the people who have rejected you, have spoken against you, said and did all kinds of things against your people. They deserve it. But whatever you do, don't shine that light on me. Don't shine it on my darkness. Because as odd as this sounds, there's a certain comfort the darkness of sin in my heart. There's a certain comfort there. It's what I know. It's what I think I can control, even though if I'm honest with myself, it's, with myself, it's really controlling me. But I know what that is, and I, I know how to feel, with, feel about that and how to work with it. But I don't know about your light, God. This light that shines in the darkness. It's strange. It's powerful. You, God, are too powerful for me to control, to control the light that you would shine on us. And it's too bright to hide from. So no, no, we, I want that light down, shine your light, but not, don't shine it on me. I don't want it to be shown on me or on my heart, because I don't want to have to deal with what's there. Shine it somewhere else. And here's the good news for us this Christmas morning. God hears that, you know what he says back? He says, no, I'm going to shine it right on you. That's what he says. I'm shining that light right on you. And the way he does this is the same way he's always done it. Through his son, on whose face we see the glory of God. Through his son who dies for us, to save us from ourselves. The light of God comes into the darkness of our lives through the light of Jesus. It's the same Jesus that we're celebrating today. The same Jesus who is true God and true man took our sins on his shoulders and paid for them. This is the same Jesus who rose from the dead, ending the reign of hopeless darkness that had existed up to then, up till then. This is the hope that we have. The light of God, it, it burns away our sins and shows us the true and only way to heaven, and no darkness can exist in his light. He removes all the darkness of sin then, 
through his forgiveness for those who believe in Jesus. And this morning, this Christmas morning, we're coming to the manger again. Just like we did all through Advent, just like we have done in so many Christmas Eves and Christmas mornings in the past. In our homes, with our families, with our friends. It's not just for this time. We're still coming to the manger. Today, regardless of, uh, I mean, not regardless, but today, not only during this time, but after this time, we're still celebrating the love of God that took <coughs> our flesh and bone to save us. But here's the thing. I mentioned this a little bit last night. If it's only about today, then we failed. We've not taken the light at the full measure that God would have, us, have for us. Because after today, after all the Christmas parties are over, after we take down all the decorations and put them all away, after the presents are long forgotten, the light of God and Jesus is still going to be shining for us. We, we might do this once a year, the celebration of Jesus' birth, we might do that once a year, but the light that God sent to shine in our darkness, that never ends. It's there for everybody. The baby in the manger who cries with the clenched fists is the man on the cross with outstretched arms and pierced hands is the Savior who will await with wait us with open arms and nailed scar pins. This is the same light we're going to be diving deeply into starting 2017 as a church. If you were here last night, you heard me talk a lot about this. We're going to be focusing on the hard things in life, navigating this life as a child transformed by the Holy Spirit, the, a child who has had the light of God shine in on them, and cleanse them of all their sins. In him was life. And that life was the light of man. The light shines in the darkness. The darkness is not understood. The light, Emmanuel, is here today, tomorrow, and forever to cleanse us, to change us, and to release us, to grow us, to transform us, and to lead us through this world to the heaven that waits. And it all starts with this baby born in a backwater town, a backwater town of Bethlehem. This baby who would grow to be the man who would change the world, who would show us the love of our Father in heaven. And I pray for all of us that this, may the light of the glory of God shine on us today, tomorrow, forever, even though at times it might be painful. It's cleansing. It's free. It's forgiveness of sins. It's the love of God in the face of Jesus that comes to you and me. So let's, let's pray. Will you, will you pray with me, please? Lord Jesus, thank you for coming. We say that so often, but we need to say it even more. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming to us to save us. Thank you for living the life we couldn't and taking the punishment you did not want us to have. Jesus, be with us today as we celebrate your birth. As we have our get-togethers, our parties, our time with family and friends, these are all fine and good. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that, Jesus. But if they are all done outside of you, or done without you being at the heart and center of them all, then they are all done in vain. Be with us tomorrow. As we run into the danger of falling back into old routines and habits, please let what we are celebrating here today, you change us in our hearts and our minds. And be with us every day after that, too, as we live as your children and seek to navigate this world and, and this life by your Holy Spirit. Transform us through your word and by your spirit. So, yes, not only can we navigate this life, but we do so as your children reaching out to others to help them navigate in you as well. It's in your life to pray, Jesus. Amen.
Amen.